G'day mortals! Today we're going to do some animation with Stable Diffusion. Uh, in particular we're going to be using this certain technique where you get a normal video and you pass every frame in that video to image to image and that way you get to change the style of the video so that it looks like, I don't know, this is Ocarina of Time if you want. We're going to be doing something quite similar. Uh, in Black Adam the movie, Black Adam sits on a chair and there's some triumphant music. And we're going to change that to Andrew Tate, because someone just made a nice Andrew Tate embedding. So that's going to be fun. And we have a checklist. And we're going to stick to this checklist, and we're going to use it, and it's going to be easy, okay? It's going to be easy and nice. First, we have to pick a driving video. Well, that's already done. We have this 10 second video of uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson sitting down on a chair. Make sure it's not too long, otherwise you're going to have a bad time. Now we have to decompose this video down into individual frames. So this is something you can do a bunch of different ways. Obviously we know videos are made up of frames. You just take the video, take all the frames out of it. Um, I'm going to use FFmpeg for this because FFmpeg is very fast. If you don't have FFmpeg installed, you could use this website here called EaseGift. EaseGif. Uh, you can go video to PNG, but downloading takes a while and it's kind of annoying. So we're just going to use FFmpeg. So we're just going to start in the folder where our video is, click up here, and then type CMD. And this will open command prompt in that exact location and we can sort of confirm this because if we go dir dir then it shows us uh, that the atom chair is in the same directory next we want to make sure that ffmpeg is installed so we go where um, it, ffmpeg is like a video editor but it comes as a command line tool so it's really complicated and hard to use to be honest but if you just follow the commands that i'm putting in you'll be able to be just fine here we say ffmpeg and then we have an i which is input and in this case, it's Adam Chair, so Adam. So we're just saying FFmpeg, here's your input, your i, it's AdamChair.mp4. And then we say what the frames per second is, in this case it's 24. And then we give a format for exactly what the output should be. So it's going to be out um, slash d. And in fact, we're going to say d03. Um, so in this case, that means that the output will be something like D0001, D0002, because it's like three. If it was a two, it'd be like D01. So that's what we're going to say. And we want it to be a PNG image because we like PNGs. Uh, so go ahead. And then you'll see all this craft, all this like stuff print out. And then pretty quickly, if you minimize, you'll see that all these PNG images are now here. Great, right? You can sort of go through them very slowly. So we're going to take all these PNGs and we're going to chuck them in a folder of their own. Now I've got all our PNGs. The only issue is that they're really long and I want them to be kind of square. So to make them square, I'm going to use this website called Brime. Yeah, Brime.net, which makes it easy to crop images. So I just want these to all be cropped into a square. So all I have to do is go to where my images are and select them all and then plonk them in here and they'll all start populating. It's really easy, really good website to use. You might take a little time to upload them all. They're like 238. So take a bit of time. And we want to crop this around the center here so that we just get this square in the middle. And as you can see, it automatically does that. In order to make it go to the center, you might have to tick and untick this box a few times. I don't know. Anyway, it's pretty easy. Now all you need to do is say save as zip. And it will take all those files, crop them, and then save them again. There's probably other easy ways to do them if you have your own method, like please use your own method. Okay, it gives us this nice zip file and we're going to extract all um, uh, downloads black tate and then we're going to make a new one called cropped which will contain all the PNGs from the original PNG folder but um, now they'll all be cropped. Hopefully, if everything goes well. Okay, okay, okay. So, kill this, back to our original place, black tate, cropped, let's have a look at one of them. Yep, yeah, it's a nice square. Unfortunately, it's got these letterbox things around it. That's okay, I'm not too bothered. Letterboxes are okay for this. So, that's all done. That means we can tick off our first box. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a few of these image to image frames that we've just made, and we're gonna calibrate our process in stable diffusion, right? Because we want to make sure that it works on a few frames before passing every single frame through. So we're going to go to our local automatic 11.11 install, go to image to image, and we're going to grab 
one of these images. Let's just take the third one. Okay, that's really good. And now we need to create a prompt. Okay, we're going to be using the Andrew Tate embedding from uh, Civitai. So civitai.com, there's a nice Andrew Tate embedding. That's really funny. When I came here yesterday, there, he had some pictures of Andrew Tate looking really nice and good. And now he's changed it to pictures of Andrew Tate crying because people in the comments were like, how dare you make uh, an embedding of Andrew Tate where he looks good and sexy. <laughs> so this person's obviously like doubled back and said, this is a parody not intended as endorsement. <laughs> so obviously they've, um, you know, they've, they've listened to the crowd here. Okay, so we just download latest and it's an embedding. It's a, um, it's a textual inversion checkpoint, which I've made a video on textual inversions. If you want to, you can probably check it out, but go to the folder. This is in downloads. It says and tat. Uh, we just cut that, go to our stable diffusion directory, uh, embeddings, and we paste it in. I've actually already got the embedding, so no need for that. Um, next, we have to work out, because we have to use this embedding properly, we need to work out what base model to use. So SD 1.5 and the keyword. So SD 1.5, we got selected, great, and then all we need to do is chuck in the keyword and tat, and then we're going to say a few more things. So we're going to try that, uh, and we're going to go ahead and generate. And the results we're going to get are like, they're not going to be very good. Yeah, as we can see, it's just a completely devoid uh, of any connection to the original image, basically. It's just Andrew Tate, doesn't even have his mouth closed. So. What instead we're going to do is, firstly, we're going to up the sampling steps a fair bit. We're going to up them to like 50, because usually that gives you nicer results. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and drag the denoising strength all the way down to like 25. And this will ensure that basically stable diffusion sticks pretty damn close to the original image we had there. And we're going to try that again. It's probably going to be a lot faster because lower denoising strength means we go faster. Okay, so this is pretty close. Unfortunately, Andrew Tate doesn't look so good here. Um, this could possibly because of the prompt, I'm not sure. I'm gonna change the noising strength a bit. I'll up it to 2.9 and we'll see what happens. That's a little better, but you really can't see his face. Um, we're gonna change the prompt so that maybe like it pays more attention to his face. That's what we want. Hmm. It's really not getting the details so well. If we make the resolution a bit larger, it might give it a bit more assistance in creating that. Yeah, okay. We're definitely looking a little bit better here. We're definitely looking like substantially better. I'm gonna up the resolution again. Okay, so by increasing the resolution here, it looks like we have managed to get a better, a better image. And we do sort of get Andrew Tate a little better. Um, I think the, the the mouth closed is actually is actually not gonna is actually not going to do us much good here. <laughs> I think it's making it focus way too much on his mouth. So instead, we just say, uh, sitting on throne, muscular, smug, light shining on face. And of course, I don't need to include muscular because, you know, Andrew Tate, he's pretty, he's pretty built. The top G, he's a very, he's a very strong, strong man. <laughs> there we go. Now his mouth is closed. Okay, so this frame looks pretty good. We could try a few more frames, but I think this is honestly enough calibration. We're gonna tick that one off. We've done the calibration. Now all we need to do is pass every single frame to image to image here. And this is a lot easier than you might hope. So just from image to image, you go to this batch image to image section, and then you select an input directory. In this case, it's this cropped directory. So make this window a little bit larger. This is the input, so we're asking, hey, stable diffusion, grab every single image and then run that through image to image in that directory. And now we're just gonna make a new one called output, copy that, and that's the output. And that's literally all we need to do, lads. We just click generate and it'll generate for us. What I'd suggest doing at this stage is looking at the terminal and seeing if you know normal terminal things seem to be happening, which in this case they do. Yep, it's just sort of like, you know, those bars are appearing and it looks like it's making progress and up here you can see 1%. So that's really looking pretty good. Now all you have to do is wait for it to finish. Okay, and the process is completed. It looks pretty good. We can just check some of the outputs. Okay, so these look, these look pretty good. These look like exactly what we want. Okay, so we can tick this box off. We've passed every frame through image to image and now we have these nice animated frames. 
Now we just need to combine them together to make a video. Again, I'm going to use FFmpeg for this, and FFmpeg is a little tricky, okay? It was kind of annoying to use to turn the video into frames. It's even more annoying to use to turn frames into video, but we're going to have a go anyway. So we're going to go to the outputs directory uh, and then CMD to turn that into a command prompt. And we're going to type DIR just to check that we're in the right place. DIR. Yeah, you can see all the frames are right here. Now, this is the command we have to use. FFmpeg F image 2, which is saying, hey, use these frames and put them into an image. And then you give it the input. In this case, we're saying all the files that have the following format, frame percentage 04d.jpg, and then output.mp4, that's showing us where the output's gonna go. The only one thing I need to change from this is to add a start frame. We're gonna say start number is 211 because otherwise the video goes on for a bit too long to make it kind of snappy in my opinion. Okay, and it says here, could not find the file with path, and then it shows us the path we've given. The reason is we've got PNG files and we've just asked for JPEG files. So we're gonna try PNG instead. And there we go, this time there's no error and it completes very quickly. Now, if we go to the outputs directory, there's this thing called output.mp4, which if we open it up, hey, there's Andrew Tate. Give him one of his famous Tate speeches from on top of his giant throne. So that's great. We're now almost done. Excalibur draw, tick that off, add the original audio back in. There are many, many ways to do this. There are many, many ways indeed. And actually, because this isn't really like a video edity kind of tutorial, I'm gonna leave this one for you. Um, but what I do is I use DaVinci Resolve. That's what I use to edit my stuff. I'm just gonna put a little question mark next to this one, right? This is some homework for you. This is for you to do your own reading. Um, but there are many video editors out there and pretty much all of them have the ability to take a, a bit of video and put some audio underneath it. I'm just gonna go ahead and, and call mine Tate Music and if we watch it, there we go. We get the nice epic music. Andrew Tate looking like a god. He always looks like a god though. You know, if, if Andrew Tate came to my house, I think I would just So there you have it, Andrew Tate, the world's smartest man, sitting on a chair. If you have any questions, or you want to show off any things you made, uh, Discord is a good place for that. And also YouTube comments, which I do monitor, and I do answer questions, as long as I know the answer, otherwise I just, I just let them sit there awkwardly. Okay, that is literally it, the video is over!